Hey, it's Jordan with TYT, TYT Politics out in New York City, where uh, it looks like Hillary Clinton is about to officially uh, be defeated uh, and Donald Trump will become president. I'm with someone who was just inside the Javits Center. Uh, what is the mood inside there? Well, to say it's like a funeral would be a real understatement. If you can imagine somebody who had amazing promise and was totally loved died before they can accomplish all these amazing things, that would be kind of the mood. you know. But actually with more of a chill because it looks like the future is more frightening than we could have imagined. It's like being on the cusp of, I guess, let's just say it, uh, the rise of Nazi Germany. Why do you th what do you think the main reason is that she lost? Um, I think people that normally don't vote came out and it's the wrong people and it's not correct and it's not what our country represents and I'm very upset about it and it's not what any woman would want for their child or their daughter or anyone to see and that's what we're, we're stuck with and that's upsetting to me. I guess it's, it's going to take a long time to de to figure out what happened and for me it's just a lot of hurt and sadness and fear and the fear is really weird because I don't think a lot of people for me personally didn't even didn't even take the time to imagine a Trump America I was like that's just I don't need to waste my energy to imagine that and then the more it was coming in that Trump was winning it just felt insane and I was like you know to be a woman right now is scary and I was just thinking back to personal events in my own life that it's like I don't I don't know what's gonna happen and to be a black woman to be a Hispanic woman to be a Muslim woman like it's just a lot of fear and it's like making me think like what what can I do what can anyone do like right now uh, why do you think she lost um, <laughs> no that's not yeah, yeah I mean I, I, I think we just misunderstood like we misunderstood who was going to turn out the polls. Um, I still want to believe that a majority of this country doesn't, you know, believe in the direction um, that Donald Trump wants to take it in. I want to believe that the people that showed up to the polls that were majority, perhaps, of that sentiment, but um, that's not the country as a whole. So I guess the question from here on out is, well, how do we, you know, how do we get the most people, you know, in our country to actually go and represent themselves at the polls? Because um, I feel like tonight was like a failing of the country actually ex expressing itself democratically. So that's my, my sense of it. Do you think in, in a way there might have been a, like a miscalculation of the level of anger out there? Because I go around the country, I've been covering this for a year, and I mean, you look in Ohio, Pennsylvania, the, the closed down uh, factories, the closed down plants, uh, that uh, literally a reality TV star yeah. slash quasi-fascist could, could, could beat her. Do you, do you think the Democrats underestimated that like working class people are just fed up? Well, that's a pretty loaded question. Um, I, there's definitely anger. I want I think more than anger, it's also disillusionment because I think what we realized tonight is that there's, I mean, this whole like silent majority effect of, of sorts, right? Like people that weren't necessarily, because there were vocal people on both sides. You had vocal people on the Democratic side as well um, that supported Bernie Sanders and, you know, um, the, the more progressive side of the party. Um, but I think what, what prevailed is definitely, I guess, this like silent resentment for where the country is headed. Um, but I guess it's just, uh, it's kind of unbelievable to think we went from 08 to 2012 to this. Like that kind of a swing, I find it hard to believe that like the whole country had such a change of heart. Um, that's why I think it's all about the people that turned out. The enthusiasm was based around the idea of we had it, you know, Hillary had it. It was, it was a, a no-brainer. The, the New York Times said that she was going to win any any legitimate news source said that she was going to win and slowly but surely you saw the decline when Trump started to win states that he wasn't supposed to win. I think Florida was really the key. Um, I'm a Midwest kid. I grew up in Kansas, uh, red state. I Midwest kid wearing this suave jacket. That's right. I live in New York now. Um, I kind of get it. I, I kind of get the idea of, um, you know, a kid that grew up of parents of the civil rights movement that hope of Obama in 08 as an African-American is the same hope that a lot of uneducated white men had for Trump. And they came out in big numbers. And that's what I think the Democrats were scared of. I mean, at stake here, just the environment alone, 
that th we have just elected a man so stupid. A man who is pandering to people who deny science and are poised to pull us out of climate change talks when we are spiraling into perhaps extinction. That is chilling. The talk about Trump is like never even talk about policies or what he's going to do or what his plan is. It's no plan. and it's It should be added, he literally had no campaign structure, yeah. like no ground game to speak of. Right. There's just no plan. It just seems like a wing in it situation, which just cannot be good. They didn't like her when she was first lady. They didn't like her when she said that she was not going to bake cookies. She was going to do something different than any other first lady. So she's been not liked from the time that she walked into the White House. And I think to understand the fact that she's not likable doesn't mean that she can't run the country. And that's what hurt her. Um, not likable doesn't mean that I don't want her to run the country. And, and at the end of the day, I think that that's what really, to your point, flawed candidate, no. I think looking at a bunch of emails is one thing, but rape case, Trump University, bankruptcies, pussy grabber. We can go through a list. Invoking his uh, supporters to assassinate. Right, but I think the ideal of a six foot three, blonde head white man who shows power, Donald Trump walked up right now, we'd be in awe of him. He had that charisma that the redneck in Mississippi, Tennessee, Florida gravitated to. I can be that. The man who talked about rig elections was doing that to cover up the fact that they were rigging the election by having Comey, who is what, a protege of Giuliani, come out and sabotage the election in a way that is, I think, unprecedented and based on nothing that for, for almost a week they took away her momentum at the vital moment they stole that election. And well, polls had come out after that that showed that, that that wasn't moving the needle for him. At least the polls ah. said. But however, the polls were clearly wrong. We, we don't have a definitive way of knowing, but looking back now, do you think Bernie Sanders would have had a better chance against Trump? I think it's just so hard to say. Um, I, I think it's really hard to say. I think, um, I mean, everything from the messaging from the other side would have been so different. Um, I don't, maybe a lot of moderate uh, Republicans wouldn't have been supporting the Democrats if that had happened. And, and so, so it's just, just really hard to tell. Um, I do On the other side, you'd have a hell of a lot more millennials out. That's for sure. On the it, other side is if, it, if Bernie ran. That's, that, I don't know. I, I really don't know. We must have a voice of the people that is not owned by the wealthy or by the politicians. And we don't have that. And they must be unafraid to challenge and confront and question no matter what. And when you see these dopey people say, repeating the same answer every time you ask them a question, you say, well, now I know that you're lying. And note that this person is not answering the question. And here are the facts. So that people, because let's face it, most Americans are uneducated. And I don't think that's an accident. I think that the Republicans have a definite agenda of defunding education in our country that gives them votes. Educated people don't like to vote for Republicans, and they would look at Trump and be horrified. I'm being a little uh, uncharacteristically quiet uh, because I think in this time I would rather just let people speak. Uh, this isn't a moment for me to rub it in. Obviously, there's some upset people. But I think one thing that kind of shines through in the people I'm speaking to is a lot of Hillary Clinton supporters didn't underestimate how much anger there is in the country. And I've been saying this throughout the primary, that most Hillary Clinton supporters, yeah, they think, you know, yeah, the country, there's things that could be improved, but overall we're moving in the right direction. And I think a lot of them, you could tell by the shock that they, they didn't quite grasp the level of anger out there. They didn't quite grasp the level of how many people are out there really, really struggling. It's not to knock, I'm, I'm not like stepping on them or like the pain is real in their eyes and I don't want to minimize that. But I, I think what you're seeing from these interviews is they really underestimated the fact that, like, people aren't just angry with government. People are desperate for help. And I've met them on the Bernie side, and I've also met them on the Trump side. So I think in this moment of soul searching and raw emotion on, on the Hillary side, uh, 
once all that is gone, people are going to have to recognize that like all is not well <laughs> in the country. And that's why a reality TV star maniac could become president with literally no policy, by the way.